Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Next up, we have KAIST, Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology from Korea. It's their first time participating in Design Expo. Their project is called Sparkle. It's a visual descript feature description system. Hey. <laughs> uh, we are Team Sparkle from KAIST, Korea. I'm Cho Ro and these are my team members, Jong Hyuk, Song Bae, and Song Won. Let's start how, with how our idea emerged and led us here. 285 million people in this world, which is approximately one in 25 people, are with visual impairments. Most of them have visions. Uh, most of them, uh, some of them have no visions at all, but most of them have a sense of color. We conducted a contextual inquiry with people with visual impairment. We followed them shopping and we volunteered to help them shopping. And we found out this. I would like a pink boxy cardigan. They say it's trendy. They say it's a woman with visual impairment. Trendiness and fashion matter to sighted people. And not surprisingly, they also matter to people with visual impairment. But how do they wear and choose clothes without visions? So this is the very question that led us here to Redmond. How do people with visual impairment see clothes? With this question in mind, we conducted more interviews with people with visual impairment. And we found out there are two kinds of information during the shopping. First, non-visual information like thickness, material, texture can be gathered directly by the people with visual impairment through touch. Second, visual information, however, can only be gathered indirectly through the help of another person. Assistants like clerks, friends, family have to need to verbally communicate and describe the colors and patterns to people with visual impairment. And we notice that there is a great deal of inconvenience during this process, especially around the colors and the, <laughs> especially around the describing colors and patterns. Imagine you're describing this call to your friend. How would you describe the patterns to your friend? What about colors? Let's take a look at these two colors. How would you describe the difference between two colors? I can say if the two are blues and one is darker and one is lighter, but that's not the only things that we see. You know that the two are similar, but definitely different. And it is hard for us to verbally describe the difference. And this is what happens during the process. Assistants, even if they eager to help, they struggle to verbally describe the difference. And we wanted to sparkle up the situation. <laughs> we decided to help and improve the verbal description process. For that, we're going to use cross power and technologies. There are two people involved in the shopping process. Assistants are going to use the Sparkle app to better describe what they see. And people with visual impairment will use the sparkle band to better recognize patterns in the clothes. And this together is called sparkle. And here is our video. And after the video, the brother will continue the presentation. Thank you. She lost her vision just a few years ago. Despite her disability, she still actively enjoys cultural lives. Here, she suddenly feels like she should go out and buy some new clothes. Jonghyo is a good brother, but certainly not a fashion star. Youngju tells her brother to take her shopping. Her brother resisted at first, saying he wants to enjoy the weekend. But as his sister insists, he says yes, he is a good brother. The two arrives at the department store. 
Yongju is trying to buy some cool quads for spring and summer. It seems like she has a pick. She wonder how does its patterns look like. Oh, the patterns are too complicated for her brother to explain. She does not just stand there and watch. She uses her sparkle. The sparkle band delivers information about cloth by analyzing the cloth image and displaying it on the braille display. Dongyeok uses the Sparkle app. The Sparkle band sends the visual data to the Sparkle app. Then the Sparkle app displays the suitable description words of the visual data on the screen. Dongyeok describes how close looks and feels to Youngju in more detail with the help from the Sparkle. With her good brother and useful Sparkle, she continues to shop. They shop and shop and shop until the brother begged her to stop. It seems like it was a nice day, at least for one of them, isn't it? Um, let's talk some more about details. There are three main stakeholders in our system. First, everyone who can see denoted by green, a gray. Second, the assistance of people with visual impairment denoted by green. And finally, the people with visual impairment, marked red. We will describe how each user group contributes to and take advantage of our service. Let's say we have a piece of clothing that has, that has some complex patterns. Using the camera, Sparkle Band can transform the pattern information into a braille that people with visual impairment can feel with their fingertips. So how does it actually work? We have a software demo for this. The braille on the surface of the band will move up and down cr to create a texture that resembles the pattern. The color of each cell represents the height of each braille. So the whiter the cell, the higher the corresponding braille piece. Now let's see how sight people and assistants are involved in our system. First, sight people. When they shop for clothes online, they will be asked to do a very small task for the, visual, for the people with visual impairment. The system will ask them to describe the colors they see with a few words. This cross-source data will be sort, stored at the central database and it will be used by Sparkle Lab, Sparkle Band, and other services. This cross-source data can be useful for everyone, even the sighted people. For example, Sparkle can offer the advanced searching and rich color dictionary. With this Sparkle's rich color vocabulary system made by people, we can now search with a curry like British milk tea and expect some clothes which match that description. Furthermore, now we have a color dictionary that also contains descriptors of emotions and feelings uh, attached to colors. Designers can easily reference and pick colors accordingly. As you saw in the video, the assistants can use the Sparkle app to get recommendations and describe colors easier. Do you still remember these colors? We got some help from the crowd through surveys, and this is what we got. Using the system, assistant can say about the color on the right, um, this is a light blue color, which reminds me cloudy day and makes me relaxed. So people who acquired visual impairment can imagine colors easily with the descriptions given and people born with visual impairment can share the feelings that the sighted people feel from the color. And we will talk some more about the future applications of Sparkle. First, independence is important to all of us, but some of us don't fully enjoy it. We want to help people with visual impairment to shop freely on their own with Sparkle. Sparkle can drive them where the shopping mall they, they are looking for, and let them choose clothes and describe colors and patterns to them. And second, clothes are not the only ones that are hard to explain. Furniture, accessories, drawings, there are tons of things that are hard to describe. 
sparkle makes describe uh, can make describe easier. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Korea. Who would like to start? Yeah. Um, great job, guys. Um, I, I, I really like this concept. I think you guys have done an amazing job, actually. It's, you've got a ton of detail in here. There's a software service that you've designed, a platform for uh, crowdsourced information and you know, subjective, qualitative descriptions of color. Um, there's a hardware device in here. There's obviously got its own gamut of scenarios that you've only lightly touched on here. Um, not only that, you've the graphic communication work, uh, the design of your presentation is really beautiful, the character design and all of those things. I think, I think there's just tons to commend you on and it even looks like there was some software image processing work done uh, just to do some live video uh, presentation. And, and let, me, let me just say that quite a lot of that happened between Monday and today. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, even, even more impressive uh, uh, for how far it's come, so well done. So I think um, that was really interesting. Um, I really like um, many aspects of this. I thought the the Braille, um, the sort of representation of pattern via a sort of a, a tactile pattern thing um, was really interesting. I don't know, it'd be great to see some kind of, ta you know, progression on that and testing and how to, can people really feel it and what does it mean to have polka dots? For, yeah, anyway, there's, there's an awful lot of kind of understanding patterns, but it's really interesting. And I, I like the way that you thought about color in a, um, and different ways of explaining that as well. I mean, I think it would have been great to see, um, I was not completely convinced by the way that the cut, you know, the wrist thing worked with the app and the, dis the description of the color versus the pattern. I think that, that felt um, a little bit kind of, Un disconnected uh, apart from that but it was really nice and you did a great job explaining it um, yeah I, I think this is really really neat I mean I I um, it took me a maybe I'm a slow study I it took me a little while to get w when because the pattern that was taken off the rack had texture to it it threw me off you've probably already heard this feedback um, so I, I, I won't belabor the point but um, once I got it I, I started to kind of appreciate the um, Kind of expansiveness of what you guys are going for here. This is a lot of vision, and and, and uh, I always worry in those situations that maybe it's a, it's a lot in platform. But if you can produce that entire experience, um, I see the vision. You know, I think it's really really exciting. So, um, what I was most excited about was the end result. You know, I thought that the crowdsourced um, actual uh, description um, was really kind of uh, very helpful, uh, very meaningful, kind of in that response. And so. Um, just getting that part right um, in terms of how people uh, give you the right words and how you discern that these are the right ones uh, for this thing um, and for each of those cases, um, each color, each garment, I mean, that's a very expansive uh, problem even if you don't have uh, hardware or anything else contributing to that. So, um, you know, I really, really like that part um, and I, I see that as a, as a piece of it that in and of itself has a lot of value. Um, I don't know if that helps you at all, but uh, but I do enjoy the project. Um, I like the branding. I like the look. So, uh, congrats! A lot of a lot of great work. Thank you. Do we have time for one question, Cindy. So the question was if you, get, you guys did any thinking about shopping online, because when you shop online, you have to rely a lot, a lot on the metadata that the website provides. So we actually met in, met in 
communicated with people with visual impairments, and we asked about the online shopping. And the answer was like depressed. We were depressed to hear that they do not enjoy online shopping as much as we do. They said that they use online shopping only with offline shopping. They go to the offline mall and they wear it and they try it out and they go back to their homes and they order it online because it's cheaper. And <laughs> we did not quite um, think about how to make the online shopping better. Yes, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available.